This is a fictional mind bender. So I have a confession to make. I like asshole captains of Starfleet, and my favorite being Captain Lorca. Now, why is that? Well, maybe I do have a bit of a chip on my shoulder over how captains like Janeway and Picard like to present themselves as these paragons of evolved humanity, alien diversity, and Federation ideals. Or, it might be that I find the presence of these anti-hero type captains such a unusual experience that it's actually somewhat refreshing. So I'll start with Lorca since I said he was my favorite. And yes, I know he was from a mirror universe and was putting up an act for the Discovery crew. He lied and was bent on taking power like any good Terran human would. But that doesn't mean he didn't make some good points and had some good positive effects on the Discovery crew while the ruse was going on. He appears on a scene when Starfleet is embroiled in the war with the Klingons, a war that they're losing badly, and Lorca feels that her talents are better used in the front lines rather than serving time, even despite Burnham's protest. Discovery was a science vessel, it was a prototype for the experimental spore drive as we all know, and as such her crew were pretty much civilians in a quasi-military organization. But, like that organization, they had no real experience in war, and what training they did have was limited and not really its focus for fighting other people. Lorca changes all that. While not a tyrant, his command style was not gentle either. He encourages and pushes the Discovery crew to rise to the occasion of the galactic circumstances that they find them in, not they wish that it would be, or what the way it was before the war started pushing them in ways that they are both uncomfortable with and flat out don't like. Some of his methods you can even argue are morally questionable. None more blatant than when Discovery has to respond to a distress call from a colony that was isolated and being bombarded by Klingons. Yet, despite the situation, many of the Discovery crew still find themselves questioning the captain and the choices that he's making, and are more or less slow to respond. So what does Lorca do? He plays the distress communication over the open relays of the ship, for all to hear. It couldn't be more blatantly obvious. If the Discovery didn't get their shit together, the Federation citizens were going to die on their watch. The result is that the crew steps up and puts their doubts aside, and this time win an incredible victory and saving lives. While this seems like it justifies Lorca's actions, many fans felt this was pretty underhanded. I have one friend who was a longtime Star Trek fan who hates him for this particular reason, no matter what good points he may actually have. <laughs> and for real, let's face it, playing the cries of soon to be dead people over the ship's comms is pretty damn low, I'll flat out admit that. But it served the purpose of waking the crew up to the here and now of the situation so that they can get to where they want it to be later. And this ultimately climaxes in the discovery taking out the Klingon ship of the dead, a major Federation victory. However, none of that would have been possible without Lorca's training, and fortunately or unfortunately, turned the Discovery crew of scientists into a crew of warriors, quick to react, quick to respond, without a second's delay. You could even argue that Lorca's influence went beyond his heel turn with Discovery and later death in future encounters that the ship has to deal with. The crew now has that quicker response time and turnover rate to react to situations than before the war started, and this results in them surviving those encounters. My next example is kind of obvious as well and one that every Star Trek fan is familiar with and also absolutely hates, despite him not being evil or corrupt at all like Lorca was. Admiral Jellico from Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, the setting is familiar to Discoveries. Jellicoe is taking over command of the Enterprise D to handle a standoff with the Cardassians, a race that the Federation has already been to war with and are now having a tense treaty and standoff with, during which time, Jellicoe almost immediately sets about changing the footing of the crew from one of exploration and being basically a, a space luxury hotel to one ready for another war if it happens. And just like what happened with Discovery, this adjustment too is also met with resistance with many of the crew, especially Riker, feeling like it's very unfederation-like and not the same warm, friendly atmosphere that they had under Picard's command. 
It wasn't just the crew of the Enterprise who got rubbed the wrong way, though. As I said, fans were equally pissed at the character as well for similar reasons. The biggest offense being that he ordered Counselor Troy to dress into her formal Starfleet uniform rather than her casual and admittedly more sexy outfits that she was wearing before he came on board. However, unlike the Discovery situation, the Enterprise crew had already seen several battles, though nothing on the level of full-scale war. So it wasn't like the crew was completely green to combat situations. However, Jellico, for his own reasons, believed that the standoff with the Cardassians needed a stronger footing if things went south. However, part of that plan required placing mines on the Cardassian ships in the nebula that they were in, one that a reprimanded Riker was the best suited for. So, after having Star Trek's version of a go fuck yourself conversation, Riker agrees to go and the situation is resolved. The Cardassians understanding full well that this captain is not the typical Star Trek fleet captains that they're dealing with and was much more willing to go further to achieve victory than those previous captains. No offense to Picard. Now, there are other examples I could name as well. I could put Cisco and Data on this list since Cisco was also very well known for being gruff when he needed to be and demanding, as well as Data, who was well known for when he took command of a ship, took no bullshit from no one, even friends like Commander Worf. And I would also include on this list the ultimate incarnation of this type of commanding officer, Admiral Vance of Star Trek Discovery. Vance, like Jellico, is also not evil or corrupt. Now, past captains and admirals seem to have been. And as a side note, for real, Starfleet seems to have a real problem with their higher-ups getting corrupted for some reason. I don't know. But he's also the head of a now-dying federation of planets in the 32nd century, and as such, Vance has to be more practical about what he does. He can't take into consideration people's personal feelings and preferences, and luxury was absolutely something he did not have. And like Lorca, Jellico, and other captains under duress, he seems to feel that sometimes you can't follow all the Federation's ideals at all times, and was willing to make hard calls that again many would consider unFederation-like. He comes off as cold and standoffish, and not caring about the micro-concerns of individuals over the greater agenda of preserving what's left of the Federation. But despite these traits, however, he doesn't cross a certain red line, and will still do his best to uphold Federation ideals when he can. When he can. And that's what I like about Star Trek's history of difficult captains because they are somewhere in the middle of a spectrum like between idealists like Pike and Picard and out-of-touch officers like Admiral Nechev and then corrupt officers and admirals like Leighton and Blackwell. They bring a strong dose of reality to idealist characters when their heads are so far stuck in the dream of utopia that they can't see that the ground is falling out from underneath them. And they make these characters and the audience struggle with trying to find the right balance between being our better selves and doing what must be done if they want to survive. But let me know your thoughts in this below. This is the Fictional Mindbender. You guys have a good day.